by raising your hand, that would be very helpful. Uh, if you have any questions right now, I'm happy to help you out. Good morning, everyone. So nice to see everyone. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started with prayers? Hung or yen yogi noob chong sham. Pe ma ges ar dong pa la. Yatsen cho jing yo drub ni. Pe ma jung ni je su drag. O du kadro mang po kor, kye ki jesu dag drup ki, shin ji lob shishek su so, guru pe ma se di hong. Hong or yen yo jin noob chang sham. Pe ma ges ar dong po la. Yat sen cho jin yo drub ni. Pe ma yung ni jesu drab. O du kadro mang po kor, kied ki jesu dag drup ki, shin ji lob shishek su so, guru pe ma se di hong. Hum or yen yo Yatsen cho jing yo drub ni Hema yung ni jesu drab Kordu kadro mang po kor. Kye ki jesu dag drup ki. 
Shinji lob chishak su so Guru Pema City Hung. Hung on the northwest, excuse me, on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, in the pollen heart of a lotus, you attained marvelous, most excellent city. Renowned as the lotus born, you are surrounded by a circle of many dakinis. As I practice following in your footsteps, I pray that you approach to confer your blessings. Guru, Pema, City, Hung. Hung, on the northwest. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I know sometimes we do it differently. I, I know in some practices we've been doing uh, in, to, in Tibetan three times and in English three times, but maybe once was enough. Uh, Hung, on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, in the pollen heart of a lotus, you attain marvelous, most excellent city. Renowned as the lotus born, you are surrounded by a circle of many dakinis. As I practice falling in your footsteps, I pray that you approach to confer your blessings. Guru Pema, City Hung. Hung, on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, in the pollen heart of a lotus, you attain marvelous, most excellent city. Renowned as the lotus born, you are surrounded by a circle of many dakinis. As I practice following in your footsteps, I pray that you approach to confer your blessings. Guru Pema City Hong. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, Supreme One, Teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, Foe Destroyer, Glorious Victorious One, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, Foe Destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed. Supreme One, Teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, Foe Destroyer, Glorious Victorious One, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, Foe Destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed. Supreme One, Teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, Foe Destroyer, Glorious Victorious One, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. 
I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam, guru, ratnam, mandalakam, niratiyami. the heart of the perfection of wisdom sutra. I prostrate to the Arya triple gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on a mass of vultures mountain on Rajagriha together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomenon called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on and up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. 
Taate gate gate peregate peresam gate bodhi soha. Now we'll do this silently 21 times. Te gate, gate, peregate, peresam gate, bodhi, soha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharidevaputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Thank you. According to the wishes of sentient beings, and their capacities for the high and low, common and uncommon vehicles, please turn the wheel of Dharma. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everybody. Welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, who um, we haven't met, I'm Marie Gillis, and I'm one of Lama Jimpa's students here at Lion's Roar. Uh, I've been studying with Lama La for um, about 13 years, and I'm just really glad to be here today and see all of you. Um, and thank you for coming. So you probably noticed um, an underlying theme for a lot of the Dharma talks that um, students have been giving uh, over the past several months. Uh, kind of an overarching theme of how do we stay connected when phenomena drive us apart or separate us from one another? Um, pandemics, political upheaval, um, all kinds of crises, uh, even personal circumstances can cause us to feel isolated, right? Physically, psychologically, even spiritually. And those different causes can produce really strong emotions and Reactions like fear, loneliness, uh, anger of all levels, hopelessness. Um, we've all been experiencing that to one de degree or another, right? I know definitely I have. Um, and I have really enjoyed hearing all of the different Dharma talks uh, that people have done and all the different solutions that they have, different perspectives. Um, and it's really helped me uh, to be able to kind of hear what they're doing and what they think. Um, and to hear people just say, you know, I feel that way too. That sometimes just helps. Um, cause I know it helps when they say, you know, I feel that way and here's how I counteract that. Um, here's how I cope. Uh, it's nice to have all the, these bodhisattvas kind of trying to help out. So when my turn came to do another Dharma talk, Lama La asked me the same question. He asked, you know, how do you stay connected? Um, because like all of you, I'm feeling the effects of isolation from the pandemic and, you know, kind of little relationship fallout from the recent coup d'etat attempt. And um, also being autistic presents challenges for me and kind of having relationships and feeling connected and, and maintaining that. Um, and it's actually, this is honestly something Lama La and I have talked about for many years. Um, just for me, as I've struggled with it, just on a personal level, uh, not just in the past year. Um, so it's been a subject that's actually been on my mind a lot for a long time and, and has really been a challenge for me. And uh, for those of you uh, who know me, and if you're actually just if you're here, you'll probably won't be surprised that the solution for me revolves around Buddhism. And if you know me uh, at all, uh, 
it definitely won't be a surprise that for me, the solution really revolves around uh, my Kala Chakra training uh, and practice. Um, Kala Chakra is uh, one of the great uh, tantras of Vajrayana Buddhism. Um, it's a vital practice in Vajrayana Buddhism in general, in our, in our Gaelic uh, lineage specifically. Uh, it's very central to the Gaelic lineage. And um, at Lion's Roar, it's a really, really important practice. Um, and something that there's actually a group of us that does it. And uh, Kala Chakra is sometimes called the king of tantras, um, the highest tantra, because it encompasses kind of all of the other tantras within it. Um, so it can be very effective and uh, very useful um, in really trying to stabilize yourself and really um, be able to become more connected and open. Um, Lama always feels like it's really important to kind of give history and background. So let me just kind of give you a little bit of background about Kala Chakra. You might be wondering kind of exactly, you know, what it is. Um, and according to, to sacred tradition, Buddhist tradition, Shakyamuni actually gave the Kala, first Kala Chakra empowerment simultaneous with his first Dharma teaching uh, on Balter's Peak, uh, where he gave the first teaching on the Heart Sutra. Uh, tradition is that he actually appeared simultaneously in a different location um, at a Danyakataka, India and gave the empowerment on the Kala Chakra system. Um, so he actually appeared in two places at once to do this. Um, and he, it's actually also said that he actually appeared as Kala Chakra when he gave the Kala Chakra uh, permission and empowerment and teaching, that very first one. And then the history is that King Sushandra of um, Shambhala requested the Kala Chakra teachings. Um, and he came to Tibet, requested the teachings, and then he actually returned to the land of Shambhala. And there's some question as to where that actually is. Shambhala is interesting. There are some scholars um, who kind of place it in Turkestan, in that region of the world. Um, Shambhala is interesting. It kind of varies from one account to another, but um, it basically, he brought it back to Shambhala and it became the state religion of Shambhala and all of the subsequent kings of Shambhala. Uh, we call them Kalki kings. Uh, they're the keepers of the wheel, um, keepers of the lineage that um, they have practiced it ever since then for thousands of years. And then, um, the Kala Chakra system kind of died out in India for a while. Um, but then around 966 AD, the teacher Chalupa uh, came back to India with the Tantra and taught it and it became widely disseminated. And then um, in 1026, it actually made its way to Tibet. Um, and that's where it became very widely studied and practiced. So it kind of started in, in India went to Shambhala, came back, re-emerged in India again, and then came to Tibet. Um, and that was around in 1026. Um, and so it became kind of a, one of the two main practices within our Gaelic tradition, Guya Samaya's one, and then Kala Chakra's, um, especially important and associated with the Dalai Lamas in particular. And there are tons of uh, books and expositions written on this Tantra. So that kind of tells you um, its importance uh, within our lineage. Um, and again, it's really strongly associated with the Dalai Lamas. In fact, um, our current Dalai Lama, the 14th Dalai Lama, has given the Kala Chakra empowerment 38 times, uh, most recently in Bodh Gaya, uh, India in 2017. And uh, it was really neat. A bunch of uh, Lions Roar students actually went to Washington, DC in 2011 and took the empowerment there. Uh, I didn't get to do that. That must have been really fantastic. And then um, Lion's Roar has a long Kala Chakra tradition because in addition to that, 
Um, also in 2011, our heart lineage teacher, uh, Jada Rinpoche, uh, gave the Jainan permission for Kala Chakra and did a 10 day uh, teaching retreat for Lions Roar students. Um, so that was also in 2011, and that was really special. Um, and for me, that Jainan was my first formal exposure to Kala Chakra and really my first formal exposure to any sort of you know, higher practices. And for me, it was really like being struck by lightning. Uh, it was just absolutely clear to me immediately that this was something that I needed to do and needed to incorporate it in my life. And it, it really changed something in my heart. And I've really dedicated myself to this Tantra since then. Um, I took the full empowerment from Kentro Rinpoche in 2016 in Richmond. Um, and it's been interesting because for many years I did the practice just on my own, you know, at home, just kind of regularly. There was a period where I did it every day. Um, it's varied. But one of the really neat things about this pandemic is that, you know, we've developed all these online practices and it's been really wonderful because I finally got my wish of having a, a group of, you know, Dharma brothers and sisters and friends to regularly do the Kala Chakra practice. So now we do it online together every week. And it's really wonderful. And not just wonderful for me, but that was also like the wish that Dada Rinpoche had for us and Lama La as well. So it's just this really fantastic thing uh, to be able to do both alone and together. Um, so that's actually kind of helped feeling connected. So that's a perfect thing. So that's kind of called a chakra history. And as I was saying, Shambhala is interesting because Shambhala is a little bit different. Um, and we often hear about Shambhala from Lama La about creating Shambhala, you know, here on earth. And uh, we call this Dharma talk series, the Shambhala journey. And um, I mentioned that Shambhala is a kingdom that's associated with the Kala Chakra Tantra, but it's also a kind of many other things. It's, it's very interesting. Shambhala is um, kind of referred to almost simultaneously as both a real geographical location and a Buddhist pure land. So it's kind of has like a, a relative and ultimate existence. Um, its name means source of joy, which I think is really beautiful. Um, it's made our way into popular culture as the land of Shangri-La, uh, the exotic land from James Hilton's Lost Horizon, um, where he actually puts it in the Kunlun Mountains of Tibet. Um, so again, kind of depending on where it's coming from, who you're hearing from, it's located in different places. There are um, kind of different opinions on where the geographic location of Shambhala is. At times the Dalai Lama has spoken of it as a, as a place you can go to. And at other times he said, it isn't a place you can go to on a plane. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, it's, um, and again, it's, it's where Chalupa is said to have traveled to, to give his teachings on Kala Chakra. Um, so there's a geographic location maybe, but it's also spoken of as a pure land, um, someplace you definitely can't get to on a plane or a train. And um, we can take rebirth in Shambhala uh, as Kala Chakra practitioners. Uh, doing the Kala Chakra training uh, and practice is said to create predispositions that allow you to take rebirth in Shambhala and to continue to do the practice, continue to perfect it. Um, so you would be perpetuating the Kala Chakra system. And then you would also fall under the project protection of those Kalki kings that rule Shambhala because the history of Shambhala also involves kind of a future history, uh, a prediction of a great war that will eventually uh, occur where the barbarians will be defeated and the kings of Shambhala will rule uh, in peace and justice and a completely awakened 
uh, environment to live in, a completely awakened, enlightened society. Um, so it ends up, you know, becoming this completely awakened land of peace, plenty, justice. And so, of course, it would be a place of joy, right? Um, so we would have protection and support and everything we need would be taken care of, right? That would sound really fantastic. Um, Lama La and other great teaker, teachers also speak about Shambhala in yet another way. Um, that it's actually right here, right now. Uh, Shambhala is Sacramento. Sacramento is Shambhala. Um, and it always has been. Uh, Kala Chakra means wheel of time. Kala means time and chakra means wheel. But the wheel of time, the time they're talking about, isn't clock time. It's now time. Um, where, you know, causes and conditions are always rising and falling. And um, each of our choices and reactions through choosing correctly and through our actions we choose what direction to move we choose what world we're going to move to so we learn we can learn to govern ourselves and to govern society through peace and participation rather than violence and domination right a society a society that's based on cooperation and agreement so the idea is that through the various, you know, trainings and practices that we're doing right now in our day-to-day -day lives, you know, right here, right now together is creating Shambhala, that it isn't just an exotic land far away. It isn't some place we might go to after we pass from this life. It's something that we are creating ourselves right now. Um, Lama often says that Kala Chakra practice and Shambhala practice is really a question about how do we govern an awakened, enlightened society? And I think uh, really, I think it's become very, very, very clear that right now there are a few questions more important than that and how do we create that? So we create it but then also how to perpetuate it. And I really believe that these trainings and practices are the key. Um, it isn't possible to do any of that alone, right? Um, it's not possible, it isn't practical. Um, we not only need to be able to connect with like our loved ones who we miss and wanna hang out with, we have to be able to connect to all other beings. Um, to learn to work with conflict and differences. Uh, we need to learn to work with even seemingly insurmountable rifts and differences. It is literally, I truly believe this, this is literally the only way we can move forward without destroying ourselves. Um, and the fundamental core of the Kala Chakra practice is that energy, the energy created by love, by conflict, by compassion, by anger, can all be held in a very still way that's completely still, but also very powerful, very effective, but completely peaceful. It's truly the union of stillness and motion. And it's that core, that completely peaceful center. That's where all beings, all of us, come together, unite, and connect. And the interesting thing, you guys, is that that core actually lies at the center of all of us. All of us. It's our Buddha nature. Resting in that peaceful place is the key to connecting and relieving our sense of isolation. Um, 
And it's interesting because over the years of training and study with Lama um, and of trying to resolve my own feelings of isolation, I'd begun doing a meditation to try and get a felt sense for those connections, right? Lama often talks about getting a felt sense of things. Um, via kind of meditating on the lineage tree, right? You know, the lineage tree from you know, Shakyamuni Buddha, all of the other teachers and bodhisattvas and Buddhas down to our own Lama and that thread that goes from him to you. Um, so I started by doing this meditation on the lineage tree, kind of expanding outward and it did help, but then something really neat happened last year. Um, I signed up one day, uh, for a one day seminar on Kala Chakra with um, Kala Chakra teacher and scholar, Andy Weistrick. He's really neat. Um, and it was via Land of Medicine Buddha. It was called Kala Chakra and the Winter Solstice. Um, and Andy's just really amazing. He's been studying Kala Chakra for many years. So any opportunity to get to hear him speak is really um, something I take advantage of. And um, as part of the teaching, Andy led us through this guided meditation. And it was kind of surreal because after a little while, I realized, wait a minute, this is a lot like what I've been like trying to do, but more detailed and more fully fleshed out. And it was like an oh my God moment for me. Um, because first off, it, isn't it neat to occasionally feel like you're kind of like on the right track? <laughs> Like, maybe you do know a little bit like what you're doing and um, despite it not feeling that way most of the time. So I kind of got that. It was like, holy cow, maybe I'm not quite as dumb as I thought. But um, the best part about it was that his guided meditation expanded my view. Uh, he expanded the kind of small meditation that I'd been doing and enhanced it. So it was much more effective. Effective. I was like, oh, this really is the way it feels like it should work. It's and it was really a perfect example of like how this whole kind of the teaching model of Buddhism should work, right? It's like you you kind of start, you start out with what you know, work with that, and then maybe you have a teacher that kind of enhances it all for you. So it was really perfect. So it was like being given this really precious gift. It was really kind of an emotional experience for me because it increased my knowledge, plus it expanded my view. And there was also like positive reinforcement that I'd been on the right track. Um, so it was a really joyful experience and it really deepened uh, what's become a part of my daily uh, meditation training, uh, that, that meditation on connection. So what I've done, with Lama Law's permission is to kind of take the meditation that I'd been doing and combine it with my notes from that teaching. And I created a guided meditation on connection, uh, interdependence, and stillness. And um, so with gratitude, of course, to Lama Law and, and Geshe Damshala, uh, and also to Andy, um, I wanted to go ahead and kind of take you all through this guided meditation. Um, so we, it's something that we can all do together. And, you know, don't worry if like afterward, you're not immediately feeling like, well, this is perfect. Now I have it. You know, you, you, afterward, you may feel well, like, I don't feel all that much more connected or, you know, I'm still mad at, you know, the GOP or something like that. I guarantee this is not an instantaneous process. And I still, you know, struggle with feelings of loneliness and disconnection, but it helps. And I know that with practice, it's gotten better and better. Um, so peace isn't usually instantaneous. Uh, we just kind of have to go through some sort of a process or a negotiation with ourselves, right? You can't just like slam on the brakes. And suddenly we stop and we feel connected and peaceful and, and still. Uh, when you slam on the brakes in your car, what usually happens, right? You kind of lose control. So does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions before we do? 
guided meditation. Okay, Karen. Hi, Marie. Um, hey. I just want to say thank you very much for your um, inspiring talk. I am a Kalatarpa practitioner, and I also highly value um, when we get together to do it um, from wherever we are. <laughs> um, it just means a lot to me. And um, I, you know, I do believe there's more um, teachings that Andy Weistrick does on Thursdays, and I'm going to check into that um, also and see, you know, because I think that will help build um, for uh, Lions or people, um, help build for our community. And, um, you know, I think that it's just so important what you bring up about connectedness among all of us in this Sangha and um, how critical that is. And um, just thank you for, you know, your inspiring talk is it helps uh, give me energy and warmth. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, then let's, let's get going. So again, you know, we're going to do this guided meditation and, you know, you may have already done your meditation this morning and you were like, oh, I'm, I wasn't ready for this. This is so much pressure. But that's okay. Now, again, we're not going to like slam on the brakes. Uh, Lama Law likes the metaphor of running out of gas, which is one that I also uh, really like. Um, and, you know, of course, when, when we go to meditate, we aren't supposed to just like plonk ourselves down and meditate. Um, and if you've ever run out of gas, you know, it's not like anything, even vaguely like putting the brakes on in your car. It's just like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm stopping. Oh, I'm stopped. Okay, now what? So there's kind of a process you go through, right? So you kind of go slower and slower and slower, and then things just sort of get really still. So you start with that stillness. And then after that, you're like, well, okay, it's okay here. I'm sitting here. I'm safe. It's nice. I'll just relax and observe. And that's kind of serenity, right? So you've got stillness and serenity. So then maybe after you've got that serenity, you're like, okay, well, there's just no place else to go. Nowhere else to be. Nothing else to do. I'm just here. And that's peace. So we don't need to worry about being able to just stop. We want to think about rolling to a stop and really going through that process of easing in so we can go from stillness to serenity to peace. And we learn to be still so we can like listen, right? Um, we learn to be still so we can have peace. So we're just going to all kind of try and roll to a stop together. All right, so wherever you are, if you can, uh, kind of assume the posture of meditation, relaxed and upright. If you're sitting in a chair, maybe your feet can be on the floor. Um, have your eyes slightly open. Uh, that's how we do it in our lineage. And now just imagine a line that goes from the top of your head straight down the center of your spine and out the center of your spine. And now imagine it continues down past the base of your spine, into the earth below, deeper and deeper, and finally to the center of the earth. And there at the center, it's completely still. And remember that all the other people are meditating, wherever they are. You can see our Sangha here on your screen. Maybe there's someone there in the room with you. 
And just think about all those other people, all those other beings everywhere who are also meditating. All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all the various beings, throughout all the times right now, they also have that line of energy straight through, connects in the center of the earth. So we all meet there at the center. And we're also connected through the center, every single one of us. And we meet there in stillness. So this line is extending from the center of the earth to the center of your body, and you can follow it back up, up as far as you want. You can follow it up into the sky, into the clouds, past the clouds, past the atmosphere, and into outer space, all the way out into outer space, and you can look back earth see it's tiny you can look at the earth and you can see no borders no divisions land the clouds and you can see the whole earth all of us and from outer space looking at the earth you can see it's billions of humans it's countless sentient beings animals, birds, sea creatures, the whole living, vibrant biosphere. You can see it all. And then you can begin to bring your attention back. Back into your own body. But remaining aware of that vision and of those connections, both above and below, that expansiveness. We embrace the whole earth, the whole sky, and then there's a place, the center of the earth, where we touch and connect all of us, all those people, all those beings. Now remembering that, bring your attention into your heart center. It's at heart level, but it's positioned on that imaginary line that extends both above and below. So let it be in line with everything we've talked about. Let it be connected to everything we've spoken of. And be in that heart center. Rest there. Get a sense of it. Make it a space that's not too small. You can even make it big, as big as you want. But know that there, in that heart space, the nature of that heart space is stillness. Touch that stillness at the center of the earth. Rest there. Feel a sense of being grounded in the stillness. Now, as you rest there, the earth continues turning. And the sun and the moon and the stars are in motion as well. And just as the earth is turning and the planets are in motion, 
in the heart space, there's motion. It's the motion of various energies. But you don't want to try and stop them or control them. Just make that stillness big enough to contain them and then just be there with them. You don't have to do anything. That stillness is like the vast, endless depths of the ocean. And the energies are like the waves on the surface. Sometimes they're chaotic, and crashing, and stormy, but always, given time, they settle. If you ground yourself in the stillness, the energies aren't disturbing. Because really, those energies are signs of life, of vitality, of creativity. Even when they arise from conflict. The training here is learning to allow them to be. Without struggling with them. Without doing anything. Because of confidence in the stillness of the heart space. You know, the size of the heart space that you imagine is indeterminate. It can be as tiny as a dot on a page. It can be as vast as the whole universe. But no matter what, in it, absolutely everyone, all beings, are connected. In person, online, no matter how close they are, how far away, heart to heart, they're connected. Our energies meet and rest in that stillness and energy at the center. And so in that heart space, we deeply, profoundly, inevitably, connected to all other beings, each one of us. There is no separation. And just know that. So, thank you for joining me and bearing with me during that meditation. Um, so, I, I hope that this is something that maybe we can all use uh, to create a peaceful place uh, at our center. Um, and find 
the center that binds us all in peace together. Um, I really believe this is real, that this is really possible. It really is real. I truly believe, you guys, that we can create Shambhala. I know recently Lama's been asking his students, uh, do you believe in world peace? Um, do you believe world peace is possible? And um, call me Pollyanna, but I really do believe that world peace is possible. I think we can do this. I really do. By doing these practices, by recognizing interdependence, by working together, by learning to work with differences, by learning patience and compassion, and by really cultivating bodhicitta, I really think it's possible. Um, I really do believe in cause and effect. I do believe that what we do here has ripple effects that spread out. Um, and I am just so grateful to have a community of people like all of you who, you know, we're all moving that direction together. It really is beautiful. Um, so yeah, I, it, it's a hard question, right? Is world peace really possible? But I truly, truly believe the answer is yes. I really do. And I think by us coming together this way, um, by doing things separately, doing things together, uh, it will all work in the end. Um, it's going to take work, but it definitely can be done. Uh, I believe we all have Buddha nature. Um, and I believe that peaceful people can create and amplify peace. Um, and that's what it's really all about. Um, we can create peace and justice and uh, good things for all. And in the end, it creates Shambhala. And we don't even have to wait for another lifetime to get there. It can be right here, right now. And that's what I really believe. That's what Shambhala is, right here, right now. Questions, comments, complaints? Well, I'm going to take that as a no. So um, before we do closing prayers, um, I do have one brief announcement to make. Uh, speaking of Kala Chakra and Shambhala, some of you already know about this, um, just because I talk to you more frequently than others. Um, some of you don't. Something that's really neat that's, oh, wait, we have a question. Thank you, Andrew. How does this concept of connecting through the line relate to the golden thread that Lama talked about? Oh, that's actually a really fantastic question. Um, Andrew asked, um, how does this relate to the golden thread that Lama talks to us about? And that line that I visualize, when I do, just for me personally, over time the, this meditation for me has become kind of more and more elaborate, and it really did start with very much that golden thread going, you know, from my heart space to Lama's. And um, so initially it was just very much, you know, Lama and I, boom, boom, back and forth. But over time, I realized that, you know, I needed to expand that. And so it, it expanded into the lineage tree and then outward from there. And so now what actually my visualization very much looks like is many, many golden lines uh, in, intersecting my heart space and going out in all 10 directions, like a mandala. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen the line, just line, line drawings of mandalas before they're filled in with sand. And it's, it's very much to me 3D, like a 3D line drawing of a mandala um, and so I, I very much have this sensation of these golden threads going out in all directions and it's uh, energy that's traveling along fantastic question thank you Andrew did that make sense 
Oh, you're very welcome. I'm so glad to see you, Sharon. I miss you. Well, all right then, so my announcement. Perfect, thank you, Andrew. So the announcement is, um, I know um, for any of us who have been uh, studying with Lama for any length of time, I know that you know one of his dreams for many years is to begin to publish his Dharma talks um, and to uh, start compiling them into book form and we have finally begun that process and about a month and a half ago uh, we went out and we struck our claim to the name Kala Chakra Press and kidnapped all the domains online for it so we are uh, inaugurating Kala Chakra Press for Lion's Roar and we're going to have a tab on the website for Kala Chakra Press and associated with it um, so that we don't all have to wait and wait and wait and wait for an actual printed book. Um, I'm working with our wonderful friend Dirk to create a, what's going to essentially be like a blog on the website. And um, it's going to be called Dispatches from Shambhala. And the blog uh, is going to be a place where we're going to have um, just different publications. Most of them are going to be Lama's Dharma talks from over the years that have been people have taken notes we're transcribing them making them so that they're readable and we're going to publish those there first on the blog and then when we get enough together we're going to publish them in a book and that process is going to continue so what's really neat is um you know stuff that you didn't get to hear because you weren't coming to lion's roar or you know you missed that day you're going to get to see and um so it's going to be a really, really neat process, and it's um, an immense privilege uh, for me to uh, help Lama with this. Um, it's a lot of pressure, um, but it's going to be a really wonderful thing. So uh, what Dirk and I have talked about is um, we're probably going to inaugurate the um, blog spot on the website probably in a couple of weeks. Um, so probably towards the big you know, middle of January. Um, and, pardon? February. Oh, February. That's right. We're in January, aren't we? Thanks, Connor. <laughs> Losing track of time. So yeah, middle of February. That'll give um, me time to learn WordPress and not mess it up too badly. And um, and so it'll be up and running, and we'll make an announcement when uh, we're ready to pull the trigger um, on the weekly email. So um, it's going to be really neat, and uh, it's just a really, really wonderful new project for Lion's Roar. So uh, say prayers for the success of Kala Chakra Press, and um, I just think it's so important for other people to hear Lama's vision and his incredible Dharma teachings over the years. Um, it's uh, it's going to be really, really perfect. So, and all of you have helped make that possible as well. So many of you have taken notes and and done all that stuff. So uh, you're all going to be part of it. So it's wonderful. It's a true community project. Yes, Karen. Um, I actually think that on my computer, um, there was a period of time about 10 years ago uh, where we were recording Lama with uh, you know, the technology at the time, which was a little iPod with a speaker or with a microphone on it. And I think that I have many, many recordings and I had uploaded them to various people, but I've never seen them come out either transcribed or on the web. So is there a place, if I still can find those on my computer, is there a place for those older teachings like from 10 years ago or so? That would be with me. You okay. can send those to me and I will, I will entrust them into my care. Some of them may have been transcribed. Um, so there, there's always a possibility that some of them were, were already transcribed. Um, but yeah, send it along. I would appreciate it. I mean, it's a great, it's a great number of them. I'll, let me, I'll see what I have and can do. Um, see what I can do. Cause I, I've always wanted to something to happen to those that's why i've kept them for so long well thank you thank you so much for caring for them for so long and yeah we'll definitely we'll figure something out 
Okay. Thank you. That's my motto. We'll figure something out. Doug. I was, I, I, yeah, I, it's kind of hard to use the pad. It keeps moving back and forth. I know <laughs> um, that really. I was wondering if what Karen was talking about was some of the same things that was on our little known Google site, you know, Google site, which has a lot of recordings on it going back to 2016. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Is Do we still have that site, Doug? Yeah. Yeah, I have a link to that. Can you send me the link and I'll check it against what I have? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, it was probably one of those things that some people had it, and that's about it. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. All right, you guys. Any other questions or complaints? I have an announcement. Oh, Connor has an announcement. Um, so some of you may know that the sign at Lion's Roar was um, degrading, and you couldn't really see it. And so for the last year, uh, Actually, more than that, Lama's been working with people to get a new sign created and made. The new sign is now made, and it is up and in the ground uh, outside uh, the front of the Gompa. So if you want to go drive by, you're more than welcome to. I would encourage it. Um, see it for yourself. There will be pictures in this week's Roar. Um, if you have any questions, you can direct them to Lama or myself. Fabulous. Well, it was really wonderful to see all of you. I miss you all and, and hope we get to see each other really soon. Um, come to Tonglin if you want to see me. I'm there every month. So, All right, you guys. Let's go ahead and do uh, closing prayers if Matthew's ready. I'm ready. Okay. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenresig, Tensing Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokeshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losong Dragpa, I make request at your holy feet. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marie. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.